Welcome back my friends. The news today is that shipping giant UPS has announced that it will cut 12,000 jobs. This is primarily because package volume slipped last quarter. UPS fell short of Wall Street revenue estimates Tuesday, reporting drops in shipping volume, both internationally and domestically. The company also announced 12,000 layoffs as part of an effort to align resources in 2024. UPS's 2024 outlook expects revenue to range from $92 billion to $94.5 billion. On Tuesday, according to the company's website, UPS had more than 500,000 employees in more than 200 countries and territories. But before we get into all of that, I would like to thank everyone who views my videos. If you would like to support the channel, please see the link to buy me a coffee in the video description below. And please hit the like button and leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. UPS fell short of Wall Street revenue estimates Tuesday, reporting drops in shipping volume both internationally and domestically in its fourth quarter earnings report. The company also announced 12,000 layoffs as part of an effort to align resources in 2024. The workforce reductions will save the company about $1 billion in costs, CEO Carol Tome said on a company earnings call. 2023 was a unique and quite candidly difficult and disappointing year. We experienced declines in volume, revenue, and operating profits, and all three of our business segments, Tome said. Shares of the package giant dipped more than 8%. Here's how the company performed compared to Wall Street estimates. Adjusted earnings, 247 versus 246 per share expected, according to LSEG, formerly known as Refinitiv. Revenue, 24.92 billion versus 25.43 billion expected. For the last three months of 2023, UPS reported net income of $1.61 billion or $187 per share compared with $345 billion or $396 per share a year earlier. Adjusting for one-time items related to pensions and intangible assets, UPS earned $247 per share. Revenue declined 7.8% to $24.9 billion from $27 billion last year. The company reported a 7.4% drop in average daily volume domestically and an 8.3% decrease internationally. Tome said the international softness was heavily weighted in Europe, coupled with freight complications in the Red Sea region, as well as the Panama and Suez canals. Though the earnings report did not directly mention any financial impacts from negotiations with the Teamsters in August over labor contracts, Tome cited the talks and the macroeconomic environment more broadly as contributing to the disappointing year. The company also said it's considering selling its Coyote truck brokerage business, which Tome called a highly cyclical business with considerable earnings volatility. The CEO also added that the company is planning to ask workers to return to the office five days a week in 2024. UPS 2024 Outlook expects revenue to range from $92 billion to $94.5 billion, with an adjusted operating margin of about 10% to 10.6%. The workforce reduction is part of an effort to align resources in 2024 and will save the company nearly $1 billion, the Atlanta-based company's CEO Carol Tome said on a company earnings call. I want to thank Upsers for providing the best on-time performance of any carrier for the sixth year in a row, Tome said in a statement released by the company Tuesday. UPS Director of Financial and Strategy Communications Brian Hughes confirmed the layoffs to USA Today. In 2023, dynamic external and economic conditions led to lower volume and a more than $9 billion decline in revenue year over year, Hughes wrote in an email. As a result, Hughes said, the company plans to right-size its global staffing and eliminate roughly 12,000 jobs around the world over the next several months, and that 75% of the reductions will come during the first half of 2024. He would not say exactly which positions would be eliminated. It's important to note that the reduction of less than 3% of our workforce does not impact union-represented roles, Hughes said, adding drivers are typically union members. However, we continue to align staffing in our operations to the needs of our business. Hughes said the company will provide support to all affected employees, including severance packages and outplacement assistance. The layoffs at UPS are not a result of the Teamsters strike. According to a news article by MSN, no employees represented by the International Brotherhood of Teamsters have been affected by the layoffs. The layoffs are part of an effort by the company to reduce costs and increase efficiency. The company's revenue outlook for the year was lower than expected, which led to this decision. The company is also mandating that employees return to the office five days a week this year one. According to UPS CEO Carol Tome, the company is planning to cut 12,000 jobs in an effort to reduce costs and increase efficiency. 
The company's revenue outlook for the year was lower than expected, which led to this decision. The company is also mandating that employees return to the office five days a week this year. Some analysts blame the layoffs on the freight recession. But is there really a freight recession? Yes, there is a freight recession. A freight recession refers to a major slowdown in the transportation of goods. It is underway when there is a contraction in the number of trucks transporting goods to consumers for two straight quarters. According to a news article by Yahoo Finance, the current freight recession is unlike any other in history. The root cause of the current freight recession has been the imbalance of supply and demand. Freight volumes are currently up 16% over 2019 levels. This has led to overcapacity in the industry which has resulted in low freight volumes and tender rejections. Several industry analysts, including those on Wall Street, are predicting that the U.S. is heading toward a freight recession. The length of a freight recession can vary, depending on a variety of factors including the underlying causes of the recession and the broader economic climate. Some freight recessions may last only a few quarters, while others may last several years. According to a news article by WBEX, Leading industry analysts predict that the second half of 2024 will see movement toward normalization, but still far from what we saw in the industry during pandemic times. Another news article by Yahoo Finance states that the current freight recession is unlike any other in history. Freight volumes are currently up 16% over 2019 levels. This has led to overcapacity in the industry, which has resulted in low freight volumes and tender rejections. Right now, there is no information on whether FedEx is planning to lay off employees or not. However, it is worth noting that each company has its own unique business model, which may be affected differently by external factors, such as the freight recession. But what do you think? Please hit the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Please share this video on social media. And before we end, a word from the sponsor of this video. Today's sponsor is ProWorldNet.com. ProWorldNet.com is a job website specifically dedicated to licensed professions. Doctors, including any type of specialty. Nurses, and that includes all grades of nurses. Lawyers, regardless of area of legal focus. Teachers and professors, from kindergarten through graduate school, as well as any kind of job that requires a government license or certification. And ProWorldNet.com also includes short-term gig-type jobs as well. So be sure to check out ProWorldNet.com if you are looking for a job or an employee. Thank you for watching.